of Super League comes to an end on a Friday night where it had it all. It was absolutely a sensational night of Rugby League. We hope you enjoyed it. Let's now unpack it in this special In The Sheds round 27. Going into this round, of course, it was quite simple at the top. If Wigan won their game at the League Leopards, they, of course, will be the winners of the League Leaders' Shield. They lose. It could then go, of course, to the Catalan Dragons, providing that they beat the Salford Red Devils. For Saints to win the League Leaders' Shield, they would have needed both Wigan and Catalan to lose for them to win the Shield. And, of course, if all three of them were to have lost, well, it was as you were, wasn't it? Unbelievable start. And then, of course, fourth spot, Lee Leopards, Hull KR Lee, went into this round with a 34-point benefit in the forward against over Hull KR. It was always going to be interesting to see, could KR put a job on Wakefield Trinity and could Lee beat the Wigan Warriors? That was going to be interesting. And, of course, the Warrington Wolves, all Warrington Wolves had to do was to win. They went into round number 27 with an 80-point advantage over the Salford Red Devils. So, providing Warrington won, the likelihood is that they would go on and be contesting the playoffs. As for Salford, they needed Warrington to lose so that they could, of course, overtake them. So how did it happen? Let's unpack it well. First and foremost, strike first, Jack Walker, the man on his way to, of course, Hull FC next season. Well, he went in for the first try of the evening after five minutes for Hull KR, a sensational try from him. And that brought the deficit down to only 28. They were chasing 28 points at this point to topple the Lee Leopards in fourth. Then it was over to the John Smith Stadium. Matt Dufty going in yet again for his 14th try of the season on seven minutes. Give Warrington an advantage over Salford Red Devils. Then back, of course, to Hull KR, where yet again, Mikey Lewis started what for him was going to be an exceptional night of rugby league football. He went in yet again for Hull KR, and now the deficit was only down to 22 in the point difference bracket. Providing, of course, that Lee Leopard's lost at home to the Wigan Warriors. Then it was over to St. Helens, of course. St. Helens needed to do a job, uh, and they got off to a good start. First of all, with a two uh, penalty, they went 2-0 up on 10 minutes. And on the same minutes, 10 minutes, Matt Whitley, who's had a fantastic season for the Catalan Dragons, put Catalan ahead with a lovely assist by Tyro May. It has to be said, his 23rd assist of the campaign for Tyro May. A beautiful try uh, for Matt Whitley. He went in, and Catalan were beating Salford by six points to nil. Bliss, if you're a Warrington fan, and that was improved even more on 12 minutes as James Harrison uh, got on the end of a beautiful little run out of dummy half by Danny Walker in goal Warrington Wolves they're 12 and up they're doing really really well now over to the big one at the Lee Sports Village and Jay Field Jay Field whatever you want to call him we'll call him Jay goes in beautiful little jinky run on the left edge really poor defence it has to be said by the Lee Leopards and Wigan were in for the first score one hand on the shield that was of course then was going to bring the points difference between KR and Lee down to only 16 now. Then back over to St. Helens. Mark Percival, a typical Mark Percival try on 19 minutes going in on the left-hand side. Very nicely taken indeed. His ninth of the campaign putting St. Helens 8-0 up against Hull FC. Back to the Lee Sports Village and Jake Wardle then goes in for the Wigan Warriors again on that uh, right edge of the league defence. A fine try from him. Couldn't be converted by Smith. Wigan, 10 points to nil up. That was the seventh game running that Jake Wardle has scored for Wigan. 15 tries now for the season. And Hull KR only had to find 12 points now to topple the Lee Leopards. Back to KR. And it got better at this point for the Lee Leopards because on 28 minutes, Kalepi Tanginoa goes in for Wakefield. 6-12 to KR now. Back up to 18 points uh, needed for Hull KR to topple Lee Leopards in four. Three tries in seven of Appearances for Kalepi Tanginoa at that point. A really fine effort from him. How will they have missed him this season? Back to the Salford Red Devil. Sam Tompkins slots over a penalty on 32 minutes to put uh, the Catalan Dragons 8-0 up against Salford. And then we go once again to the Bewell uh, Community, the Bewell Support Stadium over in Wakefield, where Matty Staunton goes in to give KR an 18 points to six lead. Now the deficit only down to 12. Now Lachlan Lamb responds two minutes later. A beautiful try, a typical Lee try. Fantastic stuff. Really good through the hands, as always. Lovely break. Nice offload by O'Donnell. Lamb goes in under the sticks 18 points now Lee in the box seat still uh, for that fourth position outstanding stuff back to Salford and just before half time Mark Sneed slots over a penalty the deficit now between Catalan and Salford is only six points before Chris McQueen gives Salford a lifeline Chris McQueen on his final appearance at the John Smith Stadium goes in for Salford right on the half time hooter but Jake 
Connor could not convert. Last week, he's doing no-look kicks. This week, he couldn't hit a cow's backside with a banjo. Oh, no. Uh, so, it was only 12 points to four that point at the break. It was all still in the melting pot. At halftime, anything could happen. There was only uh, six points between Catalan and Salford. There was eight points between Warrington and Huddersfield. It could go either way for six at this particular point in time in the game. It was still on a knife edge. Catalan would do what they needed to do should Wigan fall. Of course, Wigan, only the slenderest of leads at half time. It was still game on at the top of the table. St. Helens at that moment in time, of course, looking pretty good as well, but Catalan were in the lead. How would the second half go? Well, straight off the bat, Lewis Dodd comes out and gets a really good try for St. Helens there, 14 0 up against FC after 42 minutes. Now, Stefan Ratford does takes a, the opportunity of a penalty to go 40. 4 up against Huddersfield on 46 minutes. Then back to Wakefield where Liam Kay goes in for Wakefield and now the, the game is Wakefield 12, Hull KR 18. Unbelievable. 24 points the difference in the four and against between Lee Leopards and Hull KR at this point. Then on 51 minutes, a beautiful moment in Super League as Lewis Martin goes in for a debut try for Hull FC and if you haven't seen it, it was an absolute beauty. Well done to Lewis Martin on debut getting his try for FC 14-6 now at the Totally Wicked Stadium. Then it all boiled down to this. We're at 51 minutes on the final Friday in Super League and Jai Field goes through for Wigan, but no, Junior and Semba pull back for an obstruction and I think actually that was a clear obstruction. I've got no issue with the Ensemble one. I have to say that for me, absolutely an obstruction on 51 minutes and then 53 minutes Oliver Gildart goes in for a gilt edge try on the left edge and it is cancelled out again for obstruction. Bevan French does a sterling job of fooling both the referee, well, certainly the referee, and what was going on in the video referee's box. For me personally, one of the softest obstructions I've ever seen. No wonder Adrian Lamb was absolutely furious. I think every neutral called it. The only people who think that that was an obstruction are in cherry and white today. No doubt about that whatsoever. That was a try. And if that goes in and it's converted, it's game on. It's game on in terms of the league leader's shield, because the Catalan Dragons winning at Salford. It's game on in terms of, of, of course, the fourth spot in terms of Lee Leopard securing that fourth spot. It's all there. But, of course, it was cancelled out. And what happens only one minute later over the road, well, over the road, down the road, over the hills and far away at Wakefield Trinity. Yes, Brad Schneider. Schneider has been outstanding for Hulk AR. He goes in for a try, converts his own excuse me, his own try. It's 24 points to 12 now to KR and the deficit. He's now only 18. They're chasing 18 points to topple the Lee Leopards who still trail against the Wigan Warriors at the Lee Sports Village. It's all on. And then in goes Will Price for a beautiful try for the Huddersfield Giants on the right-hand side. Fantastic way to say goodbye to the faithful of Huddersfield from Will Price. He had a really good game. We'll come back to that later. And now at the John Smith Stadium, it's down to only four points. Uh, sorry, not four points. 14 points to eight now. Down to six points between the Warrington Wolves and the Huddersfield Giants. And then one minute later, Ben Halliwell goes in for the Salford Red Devils to tie it up at Catalan. Oh, some unbelievably uncharacteristic defending by Ben Garcia. Opens the door for Ben Halliwell. In he goes. And all of a sudden now, Salford have a lifeline. It's 8-8 eight, eight, and Huddersfield have reduced the deficit at the John Smith Stadium to only six. Wow, outstanding stuff. Back to KR we go. Tom Opposhik, who has been superb for KR this year. An outside chance for the Dream Team. Surely he was considered for that centre position. He goes in. And now it's 30 points to 12 to KR. 12 points is what KR are chasing. And four points, four minutes later, in goes Brad Schneider for his second try of the game in which he converts it. It's 36 points to 12. And they're only now trying to chase six points to topple Lee into fourth spot. 64 minutes and Johnny Lomax goes in for St. Helens. 20 points to six, a typical Lomax try, burying under, really nicely done from jo Johnny Lomax, and then back to the John Smith Stadium, Stefan Ratford goes and scores, uh, well goes and takes a penalty for his 100th goal of the 2023 season for Stefan Ratford 16 points to 8 now in favour of Warrington Wolves, 66 minutes, Matty Staunton goes in for KR, oh but it's not converted, there's two points now between Lee Leopards 
and Hull KR for that fourth spot. It couldn't be closer. Back over we go to St. Helens. They just had to win. They had to give themselves a chance. Remember, it's really, really close in terms of what's going on at Salford. And there's only four points in it at this point at the uh, the League Sports Village. It could go either way. And Jack Wellsby goes in for his first of two tries. 26 points to six. St. Helens are going to win. There's no doubt about that. St. Helens have done their job. If somehow Salford can get ahead against Catalan and the Lee Leopards can come back and topple the Wigan Warriors. It's going to be St. Helens who win the League Leaders' Shield. It's all on. It's outstanding. There's only 15 minutes to go in Super League's regular season and it's still in the balance. It was outstanding stuff. It really, really was. And then Sam Tompkins gets a little drop goal. Catalan, 9-8. If Wigan were to falter, it's going to be Catalan now, not St. Helens, who take the league, league leader's shield. Back we go to Wakefield and Schneider takes a penalty to wrap it all up. There is now no points difference at all between the Lee Leopards and Hull KR. Both teams are going to be level and it's going to come down to points scored in the four column for the season in terms of who takes fourth. It couldn't be closer. Back we go to Salford and Julien Busquet, who's had an outstanding season for the Catalan. Land Dragons crashes over after a beautiful run from Mike McMeek and a lovely assist from him and over go the Catalan Dragons. They're now 15 points to wait up. They are going to win the League Leader Shield if Wigan somehow falter in the final 10 minutes of the game at the Lee Sports Village. Over to the John Smith Stadium and Stefan Ratford bangs over another kick for Warrington. It's now 18 points to wait. Warrington have secured sixth position in Super League and on 73 minutes that's it. The try that breaks the Damn Ryan Hall. It had to be Ryan Hall, didn't it? Going over. It's 46 points to 12 now in favour of Hull KR. They're four points better off in the four and against column against the Lee Leopards. It's going to be a home game for Hull KR if they continue and everything stays as it actually is. Sam Tompkins now uh, does a brilliant show and go at the Salford Stadium and he goes in as well. Brilliant try from Sam Tompkins. Salford are dead and buried. We know that. We're worried they're winning. Salford are losing. Salford, it's been a pleasure seeing you, but your season is over. You're going to be finishing seven. And then back we go to Wakefield as Jez Litton goes in to give, no question now, a real opportunity for KR to take the top spot. Ten points now. The difference in the four and against column with that try from Jez Litton. It's looking like it's going to be them. Of course, it's still at this moment in time. Ten points to six. There's five minutes to go. Anything could happen. But that ten points, that double-digit score, now surely Lee need to score or Wakefield need to score to allow Lee to have a home semi-final against... Well, not semi-final, first round of the playoffs. My apologies. Against KR. Or they're going to go to Craven Park. Back to the, to the John Smith Stadium. Stefan Ratchford slots over another penalty, 20 points to a Warrington win. They're in the playoffs. Back we go to KR, and now it's absolute 79 minutes on the clock. Lee still uh, trailing by 10 points to six against Wigan at home, and Jez Litton goes in for his second drive, the second half. It's 56 points to 12 to the whole KR. 14 points. That can't be overswung. KR will have a home game in the first round of the playoffs and it's 79 minutes. It's gone down to the wire and just to put the cherry on top over at St. Tully's, Jack Wellsby goes in for his second try and it's an absolute beauty. A contender, no question for me. Try of the season. It's got to be talked about. It's going to be in the mix. It's certainly going to make the highlights real this week. A sensational, sensational performance. And then the Hooters go all across the country. The regular season has Super League has come to an end. Absolutely outstanding. The only game we haven't spoken about is the Leeds Rhinos who thrashed the Castleford Tigers by 40 points to nil in the only dead rubber that was out there. Unbelievable. Let's go through the scores then. Huddersfield Giants 8, Warrington Wolves 20. Warrington gets six spot. Leeds Rhinos, as I've just said, 46 points to zero over the Cattel Castleford Tigers. Great performance that for Leeds. At least to give the Heavenly Faithful something to go away smiling about. That's been what has been a torrid season. And that's for Castleford. Deary, dearie me. You've obviously put the queue in the rack a week early. Lee Leopard 6, Wiggy Warriors 10 in a game that was fascinating. Brilliant. Another playoff intensity game. Unlucky to lead. Now they're going to have to go to Craven Park. Beaumont. Adrian Lamb absolutely living at full time over that Gildart try. I can 100% sympathise with him. I get that. I really, really do. Salford, unlucky for you. 8 19 down to Catalan Dragons. Catalan, you did your job. You've secured yourself a home semi final, which is completely deserved. I think over the course of the season, I think most neutrals would say that Catalan deserved that home semi final. Congratulations to Steve McNamara and the Dragons for securing that. 
Good effort from you and Salford. You've entertained us all well this season. Some beautiful performances from your boys. Some great tries to remember. Thank you very much indeed for what has been an entertaining campaign for you. And we'll look forward to seeing you again in 2024. Over to St. Helens, they did the job. 30 points to 12 win. Like I say, brilliant final try from Jack Wells being that one. Saints doing their job, of course. They will now host Warrington Wolves this Saturday in the first round of the playoffs. That's one not to be missed, is it? And then finally, that final game, the one that had us all talk looking for out. Everybody's getting the calculators out. Wakefield Trinity 12, Hull KR 56. They swing it around. They finish in fourth. Wow, what an incredible, incredible final round of the season. Let's now go back through those games and let's just give a few shout outs. First of all, the top game, Huddersfield Giants against Warrington Wolves, uh, as I'm looking at the screen here. Big credit to Will Price, went out with a great try, 144 metres from Will from 22 carries. He had a really good, easy game on the eye all the way through the game. He had two errors in the second half where he dropped the ball uh, from high kicks and, and one that he misjudged going dead in goal. But apart from that, it was a really solid performance from Price. I thought James Harrison was superb for Warrington yet again, just under the 100 metre mark, but 31 tackles to defence, a really well taken try on the shoulder of Danny Walker. And a special mention must go to Jordy Crowver. I think Crowver, since going to Warrington, has proved a lot of critics wrong. So much so, I think Warrington are trying to keep hold of him. He had a really solid game on both sides of the ball. 17 carries, 133 metres from him, three tackle busts and 28 defensive tackles. Outstanding from Jordy Crowver. But then go, of course, to Leeds. And Fussy Tua got a hat-trick for Leeds. Congratulations to him. And really pleased to hear from the Leeds fans on their social media pages that Jack Sinfield had what they consider to be his best game yet in a Leeds Rhino shirt. So congratulations must go to Jack Sinfield. A try, two assists from him on the night. He had a really fine game, I'm led to believe. So congratulations must go to Jack Sinfield. Over to the Lee Leopards, Wigan. Well, this was a feast, wasn't it? An absolute feast. I thought Jay Field had one of his best games of the season. A try and assist from him, 130 metres, 19 carries, seven tackle busts, a clean break. Field, absolutely outstanding. And of course, the captain, Farrell, uh, another brilliant game on both sides of the ball from Farrell, 111 metres from 19, carries 36 tackles in the game. Superb. As for, uh, you know, Lee, uh, you, you've just got to say, Lee, Lamb, well taken try. Amone, again, outstanding. 172 metres from 20 carries, 40 tackles. This guy is an absolute animal. Clearly the best prop in Super League and that cannot even be debated by anyone. I thought O'Brien had an assured game as well at fullback uh, and Kyle O'Donnell played pretty well as well. A nice assist for him for the Adrian Lamb try. So some really good performances there uh, for the Lee Leopards. Off we go now to Salford Catalan and what we have to say is uh, Julien Busquet, a great performance from Busquet. 16 drives, 137 metres, one clean break from him. 16 tackles indeed and of course he, get, he got his try. He was absolutely brilliant in that game. Congratulations must go to him. St. Tellings, it was all about Jack Wells sensational stuff two really good tries the second one like I say a stroke of genius 15 carries from him 217 metres 13 tackle busts this week Jack Wellsby absolutely out of this world different class him French field you know you could probably put Lamb in that bracket as well at the moment true superstars of our game outstanding stuff from Wellsby hitting form going in and of course for that St. Helens team the likes of Hall back even um, you know Wormsley coming back and getting over I think it was about 113 metres Alex Wormsley got so that do, that bodes well for, for St. Helens Warrington, of course, will be very aware of that. And as for the game at Trinity, well, big credit and big raps go to the scrum half and the standoff. Mikey Lewis was unplayable, absolutely unplayable. Again, Mikey Lewis, get ready for this. In fact, no, let's do Schneider first. First of all, Brad Schneider, superb. He got eight from 11 kicks, absolutely outstanding. Two tries, one assist. You know, this guy, four tackle busts, two clean breaks. He was good. But if you think that's good, get ready for this. For me, perhaps the best player of the round by a street, Mikey Lewis. One try. Four assists, 11 tackles, 14 tackle busts, 19 carries of the ball for 278 metres out of standoff. Absolutely incredible. Six clean breaks, two dummy runs, an offload. Take a bow, Mikey Lewis. That's round 27 in the sheds. What a season we've had. What a great way to bring our league table to a close. Congratulations must go to the Wigan Warriors. Yes, the Lee Leopards fans feel a little bit aggrieved. Uh, and probably most neutrals will look at that and think, you know what? They got the, uh, you know, there's a lot of lady luck shining on their shoulders. But let's be fair, the league table never lies at the end of the season. Wigan are coming good right at the death. I have to say, Wigan, St. Helens, Catalan, and Hulk AR, those are the four teams that go into these playoffs in great, great form. Lee a little bit all over the place but I've certainly still got it within them and Warrington well you don't know what Warrington are going to do from one week to the next I'm looking forward to the first round of the playoffs I'm sure you are that's been a special production of In the Sheds for round 27 Super League the greatest game in the world is Rugby League what a night what a day we'll be back 
four playoff rugby league next week. Enjoy your rugby league, everyone. Woo! I don't know how I got through all of that. See you next time. <laughs>